Last week, I posted a picture on my Instagram page and asked my followers to send me some questions so that I can answer them in a Q&A. So these are the questions that I'm going to answer today. I'm going to show you a time-lapse video of a tutorial that I have created for my Patreon supporters. So if you want to watch the tutorial you can support me on patreon or on my gumroad page all right let's get started with the q a the first question from kiriji art is what's your favorite ink and watercolor brands right now i'm mostly using noodleless bulletproof black ink i like this ink because it's waterproof when dry now I have read some comments online that says that this ink may not be totally waterproof. I think it has got to depend on the type of paper that you use. At least for me, on most of the paper that I use, it's waterproof. With the exception of maybe the Strathmore 400 series paper, the watercolor paper in their watercolor journal. But other than that, this ink is pretty waterproof to me. As for my favorite watercolor brands, well, my favorite currently is Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton, Mission Go, and Kramer Pigment. So I'm not sure if I have a favorite of the favorites, but right now, mostly I'm using Daniel Smith. If you buy artist grade watercolors from the top manufacturers, the difference in quality between their watercolors, I personally feel it's not very significant. So usually when people ask me for recommendations, I would just tell them to get whatever watercolor that is easiest for them to get. Uh, but try to get artist grade watercolors because they last longer because their paints have less filler. So you may think that you can save some money with student grade paints, but with student grade paints, they are cheaper, but there are actually more fillers. So in order to get the same level of intensity compared to artist grade, you actually have to use more paints from student grade. So in the end, um, there is actually not a lot of difference when it comes to paying for watercolor. If you pay for the cheap colors, you have to use more of the paint, so you have to spend more money to buy the cheaper colors again. But if you spend a lot of money to buy more expensive paints, they last longer. So I do recommend you get artist grade if possible. If budget is a problem, do not get so many colors. You can just start out with three primary colors or six primary colors. There is one brand that I want to highlight and that is Kramer Pigments. I feel that their colors are more granulating compared to other brands. So if you really like granulation, if you really like textures, then you can try and find Kramer Pigment watercolors. Kramer Pigment is based in Germany. They have another outlet in New York. You can buy their paints online from their online store. Sometimes Amazon USA will stock them as well. Anyway, I have reviewed quite a lot of brands of watercolor. So if you want to check out detailed reviews, you can just visit the links in the video description. The next question is by German Bolt. Would you come to Mexico one day? It's very cool and we have lots of interesting architecture. Well, I would love to visit Mexico one day. I like to travel and sketch. I like to see different places to see and observe the culture, the people there, and of course the architecture, and it's really quite fun. I think traveling is a great experience. You really get to open your eyes, open your mind, and see what's happening around the world. and. It's really a good way to broaden your knowledge and to make you appreciate life and also sometimes the country that you live in. The next question is by Puong Tra 930309. What brushes do you suggest for beginners? 
Let's look at the characteristics of a good watercolor brush. Now first, it should have the ability to hold a good amount of water so that you don't have to constantly reload the paint when it runs out. This is quite useful when you are creating large areas of washes. The second point is it should be able to keep a sharp tip so that you can draw very small details with the sharp tip and when you press down hard, it should give you a thicker stroke. Now the next characteristic is it should be able to retain the shape that means the brush should have a good spring and go back to its original shape each time you use it if not you have to rearrange the hairs each time you use it and it's going to be very troublesome some watercolor brushes are actually that soft so those are the three points water holding ability the ability to hold a sharp point and the ability to spring back to its original shape. Now there are many types of watercolor brushes like synthetic brush, mixed hair brush and natural hair brushes. If you are a beginner with limited budget then I suggest getting synthetic brushes first to try out before you explore other brushes. As for the size to get for the watercolor brushes, well if you paint a lot on A5 sketchbooks, like the sketchbook that you are looking at right now in this video, that's an A5 sketchbook which opens up to A4, I use a size 6 for this sketchbook. Now you may want to get other different sizes as well, like a small one for details and a large one for creating large washes. So generally speaking, if you have three brushes, a small, medium and large, that should be enough for most purposes. Brushes can be sold in sets as well and in these sets they come with different types of brushes and different sizes so it can be a good way to start by getting a set. If you do need some specific recommendations on which brand to get, which brush series to get, which particular brush to get, you can visit the link in the video description, I have recently written an article on watercolor brushes and, I, and in that article, I have links to specific brushes that you can check out. The next question is by Val Joseph Art. What is your biggest motivation and inspiration for doing art? Did you start painting when you were a kid? My first experiences with art was actually through comic books, more specifically Dragon Ball. I can still remember reading Dragon Ball comic books when I read them. I feel that the characters, they were so well drawn, the world was so well drawn. It really captivated me, so that's when I really started to like art and also like comics. I was always drawing on and off, but really not quite frequently so i only got started drawing more frequently when i joined urban sketches group in singapore that's when i went out every month to sketch with my friends and that's where i really start to love to draw one thing that i really like about urban sketching or drawing on location is when I draw a particular scene, I can remember that scene so much better compared to when I take a photograph of the scene. And the reason for that is because when you spend 30 minutes or maybe 2 hours looking at a particular scene, I'm very sure you will be able to remember that scene quite well. You are observing, not just observing, you are also recording down in details, in drawing form what you see so that really helps with memory and i joined urban sketches singapore in 2009 prior to that i did not do any urban sketching or location drawing whenever i go on holidays i would have my camera i would just take pictures i've been to new york been to san diego well for those trips I cannot remember much from those trips except to tell you that I have been to New York and been to San Diego. But right now, 
if you ask me about places that I've been to where I have actually sketched, I can tell you in detail uh, what happened there, what's happening inside the sketch that I drew and what's happening outside of the sketch that I drew. I do not need photographs to help me remember and I do not even need to look at the sketch to help me remember because it's all in my mind. When I sketch it, I can remember it better, I can remember the experience of sitting down there sketching. So nowadays when I travel, I will make sure to bring my sketchbooks. The next question is by Arnie James. Can you give some watercolor painting advice and tips for beginners? The first tip that I have is not really related to watercolor but related to art in general. Now you should practice on your basic art fundamentals and I think the most important thing to practice would be to get your proportion right because once you get the proportion right whatever you draw is going to be more believable and easier for people to see what you're drawing. So remember this, a good drawing without color is still a good drawing but a bad drawing with colors well, it's still a bad drawing. So you should focus on drawing first. As for watercolor painting tips, well, my first tip is this. Do not use all the colors in your palette. Try to use a limited palette to mix all the colors that you need for your painting. So for example, if you have 12 colors in your palette, but you do not need to use all of them. You can use three primary colors plus a few convenient colors. So personally for me, when I sketch and paint, I usually use around four to five colors only. I will use three primary colors and I will have an earth tone, which is usually burnt sienna. And if I have to draw a lot of trees, a lot of foliage, then I will use a green. So the five colors that I usually use would be yellow, red, blue, an earth tone and a green. I find that it's easier to control the colors to get color harmony when using limited palette compared to using a lot of colors. The second tip relates to mixing and achieving vibrant color mixtures and to avoid mud. Now to get vibrant mixtures you do need some knowledge of color temperature for every color, there is actually a certain color bias. So for example, there is a cool and warm version of yellow. There is also a cool and warm red, cool and warm blue. So if you want to achieve a very bright orange, then you should use the warm version of yellow with the warm version of the red. But if you actually use the cool yellow and a cool red, then the orange is going to be very muted and if you add a third color it's going to turn a muddy brown so you do need to learn some color temperature and there are actually a lot of resources online such as on youtube where you can learn more about color temperature i actually have a video on color temperature as well the third tip is to practice the more you paint the better you get. Learn from other artists, learn from books, learn as much as you can, read a lot, practice a lot. That's the only way to get better. Do not be afraid of making mistakes because you actually learn a lot more when you make mistakes. The more important thing is when you make a mistake, you must understand the mistake and not repeat it the next time. That's how you get better. The next question is by Doodle Centric. Do you have tips for learning by looking at other artists' works? Thank you for sharing your art and motivating us. Now, looking at other people's work is a very good way to get inspired. You can learn a lot as well. You can learn how those artists use particular tools, how they achieve certain techniques or just admire their style. 
Now, the way to learn from other artists is to learn from as many artists as possible. I know there are some people who like certain artists and they would tend to follow his or her style. But if you do that, you are actually risking your own originality. So if you draw exactly like that particular person, particular artist, your work is going to be like a variation of their work. So what you want is originality and the way to get originality is to learn from as many artists as possible. The next question is by Kate Kozel Kovar. What is the cheapest waterproof fountain pen ink you know? I group fountain pen inks into two types. One is waterproof and the other is not waterproof. Now, non-waterproof inks are usually dye-based inks and generally speaking, most fountain pen inks that you see out there in stationery stores, those are actually dye-based inks. They are safe for use in fountain pens. If you want ink that is waterproof so that you can use watercolor over it, you have to look at the label carefully to see if the ink is waterproof. Not only that, you also have to make sure that the ink is suitable for use in fountain pens because some waterproof inks, they are heavily pigmented. So if you use those heavily pigmented inks in fountain pens, when the ink dries up, they have a good tendency to clog the pen and render it uh, damaged. So be careful about that. Always make sure that the ink is labeled waterproof and safe for fountain pen use. Now the ink that I use for most of my sketches is the Noodleless Bulletproof Black Ink. The price for Noodleless Bulletproof Black Ink is quite affordable. It's around US $13. For 90 ml, you can find it on Amazon USA. If you want to try out other inks, maybe perhaps you can find Sailor Kiwa Guru. So that ink is also supposed to be waterproof, but it's slightly more expensive. You can find that ink on eBay from Japanese sellers. It's a good quality ink. The next question is by Jade Pepia. When compiling a primary color palette, which yellow, red, and blue would you use? There are so many shades of each. This is a very good question because I also have this question when I got started with watercolors. If you want a versatile palette, if you want a palette that you can use to mix as many colors as you can, get as many sets of primary colors into your box as possible. So let's say if you have an empty box of 12 colors, you should be able to fit four sets of primary colors. That will be four yellows, four reds, and four blues. If you look at advice online and also in watercolor books, they would advise you to add a warm and cool version of each primary color like a warm and cool yellow, warm and cool red, warm and cool blue. That is actually very good advice. This will allow you to mix a good number of colors but if you really need to mix all the colors that you can imagine then include as many primary colors as possible. Now which particular yellow, which particular red and which particular blue actually doesn't matter that much because each color has its own characteristics and because every artist have their own preferences so when it comes to choosing colors it's really a personal choice what colors that I recommend to you will be very different from what colors that are recommended by other artists I actually had a revelation on choosing colors during an overseas trip in Bali. It was a sketching trip where I ran out of French ultramarine, the blue that I use a lot. So I was forced to use my other blue which is phthalo blue which I seldom use. And during that trip I found out that the blue that I have, the blue that I want to use, that blue actually 
doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter what shade of blue that is as long as it's a blue it's a blue choosing a specific color to use i think that's only important if you want to achieve a specific mixture so for example if you are into realism if you need to mix a specific color then you would definitely need to choose the right paint to start with but if you are just painting for fun for casual work um, every painting is actually just an artist's interpretation of the scene of what you see or from what you imagine color schemes and color theory are fun to learn and are very helpful when you look at top watercolor artists they are able to mix colors that doesn't seem to appear in nature that's because that's their own way of interpreting the scene so you do not have to get specific colors you do not have to actually match what you see so my general recommendation when it comes to choosing colors is this if you want a very versatile palette put as many sets of primary colors as you can personally for me my set would have three sets of primary colors so i have three yellows three reds and three blues and three convenient colors that would be an earth tone maybe two greens or two earth tones and one green when you add a convenient color in your palette try to get one that you can mix with existing colors in your palette that would help you achieve color harmony more easily the next question is from fruity candy xo what is the most interesting or weird place you have sketched and what was it like sketching there i'm not sure if i can remember any weird places but all the places that i have sketched they are all interesting to me and that's the fun thing about sketching even if you look at a mundane scene, a scene that you see every day, when you actually go and draw it, it can actually be quite interesting because you may observe things that you do not normally observe. The next question is by ALXMRLV. How old were you when you started drawing? What inspired you? I'm not sure when I started drawing, probably as a kid. So as mentioned earlier, I read comic books when I was a kid, so I would just doodle along and draw the characters that I see in comic books, but I did not get serious until around 2009 and 2010 after I joined Urban Sketches Singapore. So what inspired me were the people and also the art that I see. I can see so many like-minded people enjoying what they do so that really inspired me and it, it was really fun to be sketching with all these friends the next question is by Toviro have you used or reviewed Derwin's intense pencils what are your thoughts I do have the Derwin intense ink pencils the colors are very vibrant very strong and as the name suggests very intense now these pencils they are also water soluble so you can use them with watercolor but the ink the colors they are actually not light fast so you do have to be a bit careful about where you use them if you use them inside sketchbooks i think it's all right if you want to use them for professional work then the light fast quality is something to think about there is a review on my blog i will put the link in the video description below personally i do not use a lot of color pencils so this is about all i can say about the derwin intense pencils and the last question is from Araditya12. What is your biggest motivation on urban sketching and how do you get over boredom of urban sketching? 
The biggest motivation for me on taking up urban sketching or drawing on location is the ability to remember the place or the subject matter that I draw. So that's why I really love to draw on location because it helps me remember the place better. I've been to New York once, I only had my camera. Now when you ask me about New York, the only thing I can remember is not much. Actually, I cannot remember much except to tell you that I have been to New York. So I feel that it's a bit sad. If I knew how to draw back then, I would have been able to remember all the places that I have visited and also the experience. The second part of the question relates to getting over bottom of urban sketching. I think drawing itself is a very fun and challenging activity. It actually challenges the mind. So every time you draw, it's like a puzzle. You have to solve the puzzle and that challenges the mind. It makes it fun. So it's not easy to get bored when it comes to drawing. That's why painters and artists, they, they never retire. So those artists and painters, they do not get bored even though they have devoted their whole lives to drawing and painting. I think the reason for that is because drawing is such a challenging activity and a fun activity. The thing I would get bored about would be to always travel to the same places to draw the same subjects and that would be quite boring. But even so, you can challenge yourself to draw the same subject differently, use different medium, use different tools, use different styles, get inspired by other artists, look at their style and see how you can adopt their style to draw the same thing again. If you continue to learn, continue to be inspired by other artists, I don't think you can ever get bored with urban sketching or with drawing. I mean, it's the truth. People like artists, people like painters, they never retire because it is so fun and challenging. Alright, that's all for this Q&A session. Thanks for watching or listening. If you want to ask me questions, you can ask me through YouTube messaging or ask me through Instagram. The next Q&A session is most probably going to be held on my Instagram page again, so do follow me on Instagram. The link is in the video description below. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video. Bye.